Happy to be joined by Jack Della Maddalena, who takes on Ramazan Emiv at UFC 275 on June 11. Jack, how are you? I appreciate you joining me. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, feeling really good. Super excited. Can't wait. Big step up in competition for the Russian is what you put on social media. But <laughs> I mean, in, in all seriousness, do you see it as a big step up in competition for you? Yeah, for sure. I think if I... Yeah, I definitely do see it as a step up in competition. And I feel like if I, every fight is a step up in competition, I'm doing the right thing. So I'm just going to keep that going. Yeah, because you initially in your USC debut drew Worley Alves. Obviously, he was forced out and you ended up fighting Pete Rodriguez. But, you know, Worley Alves, Ramazan Amiv, it says something about the matchmaking here. And I know you've always wanted to fight the toughest guys, but we don't often see that with, with prospects. I mean, sometimes we do, but we've been seeing a lot of uh, other style of, of matchmaking. So is this something you asked for when you talk to your management, stuff like that, or is this what the UFC has been offering you? Yeah, we saw, uh, whenever they've sort of asked and I speak to my sort of management team and Tim about it, we always just sort of said we'd want to fight the, um, like the best possible person we can fight at the time. Sort of just because I'm a competitive person, I want to fight the best. So, yeah, that's sort of our game plan, just fight the best possible fight we can take at the time. And what are your thoughts on seeing guys like Sean O'Malley, Patty Pimblett? I mean, I know Sean is fighting Pedro Munoz now, but to start off their careers, they were talking about, you know, I'll fight a tougher step up competition when I get a bigger contract. What's your take on their opinion? And, and just uh, how would you, in terms of your own career, uh, how would you compare that? Yeah, it makes sense. Like if you aren't that very confident in your own skills and you want to just take the slow route, then that's fair enough. But I feel that, if you are confident in your skills and you do see yourself as someone that wants to compete with the best, I feel like you just take the best fights you can. But in saying that, everyone has like different route and I can understand that route. Like you want to get paid more money, fight better people. But I always feel that naturally the money will just come if you fight the better people. So I'll probably just try and take it that route. Right. And uh, of course, I said, you know, you were going to fight Warley Alves, you get Pete Rodriguez. Was that hard for you to get up for a little bit just because, you know, War Warley's a kind of a, a guy that's floated around the, the, the top 15. And he's a guy who's beaten some has some really good wins, obviously, but beat Colby Covington a while back. But uh, was that tough for you to get up for to go from Warley Alves to um, a newcomer? It was pretty tough. Like, um, at the time, it was pretty upsetting because, um, yeah, it was a cool fight that we were looking forward to. Just Warley's style was pretty aggressive and we thought it'd be a pretty cool style but we only found out two weeks out and at that point I'm sort of more just getting up for the actual fight day and the fight itself so I was just ready to fight anyone really and when we got um Pete it was just yeah it was honestly just happy I was ready for the event I wanted to get out there and fight in LA so that was sort of the, my main focus at that point just get out there and have a fight whoever it is you ended up getting the first round finish. But that being said, did you feel any pressure like, OK, this guy's relatively unknown, relatively inexperienced. I got to go out there and put him away because if I go the distance and it's I mean, you're always an entertaining scratch. But if it's not that finish that people are used yeah. to from you, did you feel a little bit of pressure? Um, not really, to be honest. Like I feel yeah, I put just pressure on myself to try and put on like a good fight and try and get the win and that sort of fashion. But I try and just block out all the extra sort of pressure and stuff and just focus on what I can control and that's just what I do really so I just try and block all that stuff out as much as possible and it's your second straight pay-per-view uh UFC 270 now UFC 275 what does that feel like what was the experience of fighting on 270 and now you're opening up the main card for 275 yeah it was awesome awesome experience I'd never fought on such like a big show I've never fought on the UFC really so <laughs> It was incredible. It was an awesome experience. And I feel like this time around, it'll be pretty similar. When I fought, I was in the prelim. So there wasn't, it wasn't a complete full crowd. But hopefully this time, being on the main card, the, the stadium will be full and it'll be a bit more, a little bit more energy in the room. But yeah, incredible experience before. And I'm sort of expecting the same thing. Uh, a much shorter flight to, to Singapore as opposed to fighting in the, in the US. That, that being said, are you... Are you going to have friends and family fly over with you? I think it's the same time zone as well, right? Yeah, same time zone, short flight. So, yeah, there is a few of my friends' family that are making the journey. Just because for all of them, it seems like it's a good excuse to get out and have a holiday as well. 
it's not many people have been out. So yeah, there'll be a lot of Australians and my close friends and circle groups around. So it'll be yeah, it'll be a pretty insane, insane experience. Right. And before we talk about Ramazan, I want to talk about your teammate, Jack Becker, obviously suffered a, a very gruesome uh, leg break. Do you have an update on him and kind of what was your reaction when that happened? Yeah, that was pretty rough to watch because Jack is sort of, he's like a, yeah, close teammate, one of like almost like a team captain. And yeah, to see him go down in that manner, especially how good he has been looking and training and leading up to that fight is pretty devastating. And, but yeah, he's a, He's a strong man and he'll be, he'll definitely be back when he can. And he's had surgery now, so now it's just recovery time. But he'll be back. That's great to hear. And let's talk about your matchup with uh, Ramazan. He, he's well-rounded, obviously a strong grappling background. Are you expecting him to try to take us to the ground? Or are you expecting a heavy grapple approach from him? Yeah, I think so. I think he's pretty well-rounded. He plays the game. He t- he does he yeah he tries everything in there he'll kick and punch and shoot for the uh, shoot for takedowns I'm sure of it so yeah definitely expecting him to be looking to grapple. And I know you love to stand and strike and put guys away on the feet. What do you make of Ramazan striking? I think he's got good striking. You know he's pretty well rounded, but he, I think he's quite flat footed. In my opinion, I think he doesn't move too much on his feet. He likes to sort of stand there, move his head, and then lunge in. But, yeah, he's a good, well-rounded fighter. I expect, like, a solid fight. And where do you feel like a win over Ramazan will put you in the welterweight division? I'm hoping that after the Ramazan fight, I can fight someone that's going to get me a top 15 opponent, which would be awesome. But, yeah, hopefully just fight a another tough fighter and, yeah, just keep – Fighting tougher people every time is my goal. And you're, of course, one of the you know the rising prospects in Australian MMA. Just wanted to get your thoughts because we've we've got the big names, but you know you're obviously providing a lot of hope for for the younger guys, kind of like the new wave of fighters. So, just what's your kind of thoughts on Australian MMA right now? I think yeah, Australian MMA is really booming right now. I think there's a lot of guys coming up. The competition's strong. There's fights. Fight shows a lot. And the fight shows, even the amateur shows, that everyone's looking really good. They almost look like some of the pros you see in the big league. So I think Australian MMA is on the rise. And there will be, I think there'll be a lot more to come. Many more coming. We'll get an influx of them. Hopefully we get a big show in Australia soon to really show off some of the talent. Yeah, I mean, what is up with that? What, in your opinion, is kind of the holdup? Why haven't we seen the UFC return to Australia? Obviously, I think the last two years is just because of the all that stuff. That's my opinion. Hopefully, now, soon, we can start to see a show or two. Hopefully, at the end of the year, that'd be... I don't know what the chances of that happening are, but yeah, it'd be awesome to see 2022 end with a Australian card in the books. Have you heard anything at all or or nothing from your end? No, I haven't. I'm just so I'm fully speculating, but okay. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know a lot of people are eager for it. And I've seen you've gotten some training with Alexander Volkanovsky lately. What was that like? Yeah, it was incredible. Incredible to share a room with a world champion of his caliber. Just, just yeah, just pick his brain a little and just train with him and see what level he is that and feel that level. So, yeah, incredible. An Australian legend. Yeah, one of the pound-for-pound pound best. Uh, really staking yeah. his claim in that yeah. regard. Uh, I remember I spoke to you briefly in uh, October 2020, I believe. Uh, it was before your rematch with Alden Bates. And uh, yeah. I had asked you kind of about your, your future. And you said, it's only a matter of time before I start competing with the best. You beat him in the first round, avenge your loss. You get on the Contender Series. And, and here we are. So is it safe to say yeah. things have played out the way you thought they would for sure yeah they have you know i've just been consistently trying to improve and yeah as i said back then trying to get bigger and better fights and hopefully we'll be talking in two years and there'll be some big fights on the cards yeah for sure and uh 
One last one before I let you go. Uh, how do you envision this fight with Ramazan going down? Because he's, you know, he's had a lot of decisions. I believe in the UFC, win or lose, all his fights have gone the distance. So uh, when looking at Ramazan, are you prepared for a kind of a 15-minute back-and-forth battle with him, or do you envision a, a quick finish? Yeah, I'm def I'm prepared for a 15-minute battle, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and damage him. I feel like the more his face is busted up throughout the fight, the... Um, the better I'm doing. So that's the plan. I'm going to try and dan damage him from the get go. And I'm prepared to go 15 minutes. All right. There you have it. Well, Jack, I appreciate your time. Thank you for doing this. Okay. Uh, best of luck on June 11. And I look forward to our chat in two years. Not that we're not going to talk Thanks, before, but yeah, hey, we'll before. Chat before then. Farrah. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, see ya. Talk to you soon.